on this board, we're talking about how to officially start and effectively run a side hustle. Let's jump right in. Number one, number one, clarify your business idea. Clarify your business idea, right? You want to ask yourself, what do you want to do? What problem does it solve? What value does it bring? Think through it all and actually write out a business plan, right? That's number one. Number two, choose a business structure. Now, here's a general, general rule of thumb, right? If you're making, if your business is making under $1,000 each month, right? Then most likely you, sh you should just be a DBA, a doing business as, right? Which is just, you know, a regular sole proprietor, right? You should stay as a sole proprietor, but just register your trade name, right? You know, and just become a, a DBA, right? Um, but when you get, when, 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 you, when your business starts making between $1,000 to $5,000 per month, then you want to transition into becoming an LLC, right? And then when, when your business starts making over $5,000 per month, then you want to transition into becoming a LLC with S-Corp election, right? Now, these are just general rule of, rules of thumb, right? It really depends on the nature of your business, the industry that you're in, right? You know, your, your particular situation. In fact, here are two key questions that you want to ask yourself when deciding on which business structure is best for your situation. Number one, ask yourself, do you have personal assets that you need to protect? And number two, ask yourself, does the nature of your business have a high risk of lawsuits, right? So you have to really think through these liability issues, right? Because the great thing about the LLC is that your business becomes a separate legal entity. And so therefore, if there's any like legal situations that come up, any lawsuits, then, you know, it, it would be a lawsuit against just the business and your personal assets would be protected, right? But if you're just a sole proprietor and, and you get involved in some type of lawsuit, then, then, you know, they can really go after your personal assets, right? So there's things like that. There's, there's different things like that you got to really think through. Um, but again, this is a general rule of thumb, right? General rule of thumb. So now, so that was number two. So number one, clarify your business idea. Number two, choose a business structure. Number three, register your business. Choose a business name and register your business through your state's website, right? Number four, get your EIN number, you know, register to get your EIN number through the IRS website, all right? So you register your business through the state website, but then you get your EIN number through the IRS website, all right? Number five, now, now that you have your businesses registered and you have your EIN number, right? Now you're ready to open up a business bank account, business bank accounts. So under your business name and your EIN number, right? You, you'll open up a business bank account. Now, ideally open up both a business checking account and a business savings account because you want to use the business savings account to save for taxes, right? Save for taxes. Um, and we're gonna talk about estimated taxes a little bit later in the video, all right? Number six, get a business credit card. This is great because uh, getting a business credit card, right? Under your, of course, under your business name, right? And under your, 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 your business EIN number, right? Um, that will help you to start to build business credits. And building business credit, you know, business credit is different than personal credit, right? You have a personal credit score, but, you know, with your business, you can start to build business credit and, and, and you'll, you'll start to have a business credit score, right? And that just open, building business credit opens up more opportunities, right, for leverage, to leverage and everything. So it's a really great thing. I've done a, a separate video about business credit and everything. But you want to get a business credit card. Of course, you want to be responsible for it with it, though. You want to be very responsible. A lot of people get themselves into a lot of trouble with 
credit cards, right? So you have to make sure that you're going to be very responsible. If you use, basically, here's the thing as a side note, right? Credit cards can be a huge benefit or it could be a huge poison depending on how you use them, right? You want to use them wisely so that they will be a big benefit and not a poison, all right? So, so number six, get a business credit card. Number seven, set up a bookkeeping system. This is super important because you must track to, to really be successful, right, in business. You must track every business transaction and create a monthly P&L statement, right, a profit and loss statement every month, right? You want to be very organized. You need to have a really great bookkeeping system, right? Um, now, number eight, set up an invoicing system, right? So you want, this is important too, because you want to create an easy way for clients to pay you and make sure that your invoicing system is connected to your bookkeeping system, right? Number nine, de depending on the nature of your business, get all the proper forms of business insurance if needed. So it depends on what industry you're in, right? Like, one of my students um, just started a moving company, right? And so, of course, he's going to need to have certain types of insurance regarding that, right? But if you are a, uh, I have another student that's a Spanish tutor, right? And so, you know, with that, you don't really need, you know, doing online Spanish tutoring, right? You don't, it's a different is is a different, um, much different industry than if you're out here, you know, moving, you know, if you're out, out here operating a, a moving company, right? So you want to look into your particular situation and figure out um, is there any type of insurance that you need to get, right? So number ten, pay estimated quarterly taxes if needed, right? Now let me explain this whole thing about quarterly taxes, right? Estimated quarterly taxes. Okay, so. Here's the background. When people work as an employee, their employer withholds taxes from every paycheck and sends the money to the IRS, right? You understand that, right? But when people work as an independent contractor, their clients are not withholding any taxes. Therefore, if the amount of taxes that are owed is high enough, then the independent contractor is required to make estimated quarterly tax payments to the IRS. The due dates of the quarter of the due dates of the quarters are the 15th of April, July, September, and January. All right. Number 11. Take advantage of all tax write-offs, right? As a business owner, one of the benefits of being a business owner, right, is that you get the advantage of taking advantage of tax write-offs, right? Now, Section 162 of the Internal Revenue Code says that you can deduct all ordinary and necessary expenses paid or incurred during the taxable year to carry on any trade or business. Now, let's clarify. What is an ordinary expense and what does it mean when they say necessary expense? Well, when they say ordinary expense, they mean anything that is common and accepted to a specific trade or business. That's ordinary expense, right? Now, what do they mean when they say necessary expense? They mean anything that is helpful and appropriate for the nature of a specific trade or business, okay? So that's, that gives us as business owners a lot of opportunity to, to write off a lot of things, right? Because, you know, we, we, as long as it, it, so basically we can deduct all ordinary and necessary expenses paid or incurred during the taxable year to carry on any trade or business, all right? Examples include advertising, use of cell phone, travel expenses, use of vehicle, labor costs, cost of goods sold, supplies, use of home office, educational courses, professional services, 
bank fees, subscriptions, business insurance, and much more, right? Now, number 12, hire a professional. Hire a professional. So in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning stages of your business, hire a professional to teach you how to do your bookkeeping, right? In the beginning, when you're very small, you can do this by yourself, but make sure you hire a professional to make sure that you are doing it correctly, all right? So hire a professional to teach you how to do your bookkeeping correctly, right? But as your business starts to grow, at some point, you want to hire a professional to do your bookkeeping for you, but always stay aware of what is going on, right? Make sure that you hire a professional who has the heart of a teacher, right? Somebody that's going to, 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 to do your bookkeeping, but at the same time will explain to you what is going on and keep you in the loop. That's important for you to, to stay in the loop because ultimately you are responsible for your business. So don't just blindly allow professionals to handle it for you. You know, let them do it, but make sure that they, that they are explaining things to you, right? Make sure you're staying aware of what is going on, right? Now, if you need help, contact me and my team through our website, which is www.claysmileadvisors.com. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on the next video.